Hey there, thank you so much for tuning in to this teaching from Mission Church. We pray that this experience helps you in your journey in finding and following Christ. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube or to our podcast. And as always, if you are in the area, we would love to meet you here at 82 Stratford Drive on a Sunday morning. But for now, let's dive into this teaching of Catch the Wind. Great to be with you guys. Uh, today, I have been thinking over the course of the last three weeks during Catch the Wind, uh, I wonder what's coming to mind for people when they hear the phrase, catch the wind. I catch the wind, what comes to mind? Uh, I know for me, I'm a child of the 80s, so I have been going back to some of my favorite 80s movie moments. This is what comes to mind for me. Uh, I think of Marty McFly from Back to the Future. He's late for school, right? Opening scene, he's late for school, gets a skateboard, grabs the back of that Jeep Wrangler while listening to Power of Love by Huey Lewis. I know every detail of that movie. He's catching the wind. I think of Maverick from Top Gun. I know a new one's coming out, but I think of the original, right? And he's on his Kawasaki, I believe it was, motorcycle, and a a fellow pilot's taken off next to him, and at one point he puts his fist in the air. He's catching the wind. My favorite, though, is I think of Ferris Bueller when he, uh, he skipped school and he convinced his buddy Cameron, to take out their dad's vintage Ferrari, and they drove downtown, and they caught the wind, right? You guys remember that? Not an 80s movie, but I also, what comes to mind is John Peacock's favorite movie. This one, (laughs) Titanic. I thought, what would he do if he were up here, and he would say something about me, so I'm just going to give it right back to him. (laughs) He he was here in the 9 a.m. I'm glad he was physically present and know what he puts me through every week. If you're here, I'm going to assume it's because you desire or are at least open to catching the wind of the Holy Spirit. And what I know to be true because of what I know to be true in Scripture and because of what I've experienced in life is the fact that the wind of the Holy Spirit is actually blowing. What I've been asking, particularly for the last few years, is why aren't I catching it more often? If you guys know me, or if you pass by my Instagram on occasion, you know that I'm really into grilling and smoking meat, okay? Um, I have more grills and smokers than any one person should have. I didn't bring a picture because I didn't want you to judge me, frankly. (laughs) But let's just say that when I have time to cook, like, I've got options. And um, if I have enough time, the way that I would prefer to grill or to smoke a piece of meat, preferably beef, would be over a bed of Real, natural, oak, lump, charcoal. That was a long, yeah, yes, sir. Can I get an amen? That is, (laughs) that's how I would prefer. There are some more variables. It is a little bit easier to screw up than like if I were to use my pellet grill where you just flip it on and walk away. Um, But when the charcoal catches the wind, the, the flame, the heat, the aroma, and the taste is like nothing else that I can make outside. However, When I use that, over time, if I'm not paying attention, the vents that allow the air to get to the flame can become blocked by the ash. Now, when that happens and my fire starts to go out, I could be tempted to think, oh, I wonder if I forgot to light the fire. Or like, maybe I lit it wrong. Or maybe I'm tempted to think, maybe I just need to add more charcoal. Well, if you own one of the classic Weber kettles like me, you know they provide this awesome little handle. It's called their one-touch system, by the way. Weber, if you're watching, I'm still trying to become an ambassador for your company. They're not returning my direct messages on Instagram. So you just move that lever back and forth, and it clears the ash away, and now the wind can actually get to the charcoal, and the flame can reignite. Here's what I know about those of you in this room, especially as I look around the people that I actually know, because I don't know all of you. What I know about you is you love Jesus. What I know about you is you, you long to follow him. What I know about you is you desire to catch the wind of his spirit. But what I also know about you, sadly, is you're human, just like me. And what I know about me is there are times in my life where I have the best of intentions. But even with the best of intentions, the way that I live my life impedes me from catching the wind 
of the Holy Spirit. So today, what I want to do as we close out this series, I want to turn some things about the Christian life, and I want to flip them on their head. And I want to remind you of three truths about the gospel that maybe perhaps you don't even know, or you just need to be reminded of. Today is going to be about three things that are keeping you from catching the wind of the Holy Spirit. You ready to get started? All right, sweet. Here we go. These are fun. First one, you're found, but you're still lost. Okay? You're found, but you're still lost. The Bible says Jesus came to seek and save the what? The lost. Right? So if you're in this room, this is important detail. If you are in this room and you have believed in your heart and you have confessed with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, you are found. And nothing can take that away. But too many of us too often still live as though we are a bit lost. Let me explain. You cannot get much more hometown than me. My grandparents on both sides settled here in the 40s. When I went to Lake Park High School, I had teachers that my aunts and uncles and parents had when they went to Lake Park High School. I can still take a short walk and get to the house where I grew up, where my parents still live. I was here when Stratford Square Mall was cool, okay? I know it's hard to imagine, but it was, trust me. I could not be more from here, and yet I am not of here. For the first few years of my life, I was both from here and I was of here. I was a small boy, I was growing up, I was going to school, I was going to church, I was playing sports, I was making friends. I was from here and I was of here. But then one day, in the lower bunk of my brother and I's bunk bed, I was sitting, I believe, with my mother, and I prayed to receive Jesus as my Lord and Savior. And in that moment, I received the gift of the person of the Holy Spirit. See, I was still from here, but now I was no longer of here. You guys tracking? Okay. I was still from here, but I was no longer of here. What do I mean? Well, everything about me in that moment changed. Why I was now here changed because of what my heavenly father through the person of Jesus Christ invited me into, that being the kingdom of heaven. Paul wrote this to the church in Corinth. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but what is what? Unseen. Since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. So let me just get right to the point. In this question, I actually want you to audibly answer back. It's not rhetorical. You want to catch the wind of the Spirit, correct? Yes. Okay. So let me ask you this question. Don't answer this one out loud. Where are you fixing your eyes? On which kingdom? The kingdom of earth or the kingdom of heaven? And I know this is tricky. I get it. Because we're present in both, right? We're present in both. And both the eternal and the temporary were created by God and are vitally important to God. You're from one but you're now of another. How do you handle this? It's a good question. Thanks for asking. In January of 2021, um, our staff, we pray together every Thursday morning for you guys. January of 2021, when things, frankly, in the world like weren't sweet and things were kind of getting restarted here, there was just a lot going on. We were praying as a team, and the Holy Spirit spoke to my mind and to my heart very clearly something that's already been revealed to me and us in Scripture. Two descriptors that describe me and you and us that are found in the word of God. And these two things put together have become a mantra for me the last two years. How I live, how I lead, how I do anything. And it's this. Citizen of heaven, ambassador to earth. Citizen of heaven, ambassador to earth. I didn't make that up. Paul wrote to the church in Philippi that you are citizens of heaven. He reminded the church in Corinth that we are his ambassadors here to earth. Citizen of heaven, ambassador to earth. To earth. If you want to catch the constant wind of the Spirit, then as you live and move about the place that you are from, never cease to fix your eyes on the place that you are of, the kingdom of heaven. When you walk into work, whether as an employee or the boss, or the owner, it doesn't matter. When you walk into work, how you work, why you work, your motivation to work, how you treat those you work with, how you treat customers and clients. You are a citizen of heaven. You're an ambassador to earth. When you go to the gym to make yourself better, and this is a good thing, more importantly, you're there to make that place better. You're a citizen of heaven. 
you're an ambassador to earth. When you consume the headlines and you are tempted to think that what the headlines and culture are telling you have dominion over you, you're a citizen of heaven, an ambassador to earth. When you post on social media and use your influence and you have it, you're a citizen of heaven, you're an ambassador to earth. When you experience a setback in life and you don't know how to get through the next month, week, and maybe even day, you're a citizen of heaven and an ambassador to earth. When you experience pain and loss and you don't know if you want to get through the next month, week, day, the truth is you're a citizen of heaven and you're an ambassador to earth. We have been found, yes, but we no longer live as those who are lost. What would it look like if we were to fix and fixate and focus our eyes and our gaze on what is eternal, the kingdom of heaven? What God has been teaching me, particularly over the last two years, is I have watched people very close to me, and a lot of them, fixate on the place that they are from rather than the place that they are of. What he has been teaching me, the truth of fact is this. There is so much of the kingdom of heaven here and now for us. How we and when we worship our heavenly Father, the following of Jesus Christ in community with others, the gifts and the power of his Holy Spirit, risking something, laying your life down so that other people would enter into the kingdom of God. That is all here for you and I in the here and now. The problem is you're just choosing not to see it. We have been found, yes, but are we still lost? You know where you're from, but do you know where you are of? Second way, this one's fun. You know you're alive, but you forgot you're dead, okay? Let me explain. You know you're alive, but you forgot you're dead. Where we get stuck in the Christian life, this is so important, and I think this is going to take a while to sink in because it's taken me a while, but it is so Simple, it's complicated, but it's, it's the gospel, okay? We get stuck in the Christian life because we are trying so hard to become something that we already are. Let that sink in, because it's probably true of you because it's true of me. We are working so hard to become something that we already are. Paul says this in Romans 8, read the bold word out loud with me. You, however, are not in the realm of the flesh, but are in the realm of what? The spirit. If Big if, by the way, not a given. If, indeed, the Spirit of God lives in you. Well, why are we in the realm of the Spirit? Well, Paul wrote this to the church in Galatia. Galatians 2.20, I have been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by what? Faith. Faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. All right, so I've been crucified with Christ. I'm living in the body in which I live by faith, faith in what? Well, faith in this. He wrote this to the church in Rome. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly also be united with him in a resurrection like his. I mean, listen to this. It's in the Bible. For we know that our old self was crucified with him. Listen to this. So the body ruled by sin might be done away with. Not linger along with you. Be done away with. It's crazy that we should no longer be slaves to sin because anyone who has died has been set what? Free from sin. Let me speak that gospel truth to you again. Anyone who has died has been set free from sin. I am reading a book that was recommended to me by a guy who mentors me. That book was recommended to him by Walt Peacock. The book is called The Rest of the Gospel, not as in like the sleep of the gospel, but the remaining parts of the gospel. The book is about all the parts about the gospel that are in the word of God that we just tend to ignore. And in this book, the author, Dan Stone, he was a pastor for years. He tells the story. He's in a room with people of his church, Christians, 77 of them to be exact. And he asked the 77 people in the room, he said, raise your hand if you believe the Bible. And 100% of the hands, all 77, went up. Then he read this verse that I just read to you. 
And he said, now raise your hands if you believe that you've been freed from sin. Only three hands went up. I don't know about you, but I can actually relate to this. You probably can too. See, what we tend to forget in the Christian life is there are two very distinct sides of the cross. See, on this side of the cross, it is dealing with us in the realm of flesh, okay? And over here on this side, this is all about the forgiveness of our sins, an invitation to that side of the cross. But what's on this side of the cross, it actually has nothing to do, listen to this, this side of the cross actually has nothing to do with the forgiveness of our sins, This side of the cross is everything about the freedom from sin, a life now in the spirit. You tracking? All right. Sins, plural, okay? The sins we commit, sins, plural. That is you choosing and me choosing to live in the realm of flesh. Sin, the power of sin, you have been set free from that in the realm of the spirit. See, we forget we already died. And we get out there, And we make the goal of the Christian life, and church hasn't always helped with this, but we've made the goal of the Christian life, hey, get out there and, you know, try not to sin. That's really hard. So what happens is, well, our flesh at some point chooses to take over and sins happen. And we come back to church or we go back to God and we feel terrible, we feel guilt, we feel shame. We say we're sorry. We ask for forgiveness. And all of this sin is all about ourself. But yourself was either crucified with Christ or it wasn't. Yourself and the sin of the flesh was either crucified with Christ or it wasn't. This is important too. Until we know we've died, we'll never truly know how to live. Until you know, like believe, like deep, I know that I have died, you'll never know how to live. Maybe this will help. You guys remember uh, this movie here? We've got a picture. It's called Weekend at <laughs> Weekend at Bernie's. Um, the other two guys, no one remembers their name. They're alive, but we remember the dead guy's name. Here's why. Well, that weekend at Old Burns, he seemingly is the only one that's actually doing any living, right? He's like dancing, he's dining out, he's boating, and like a lot of other things that I won't mention. All the while, the two guys that are actually alive are spending all of their energy and effort dragging around a dead corpse. Funny concept for a movie, terrible way to live your life. Listen to this, because this has been kind of blowing my mind. I'm really hoping it blows yours in a helpful way. All right, think about this. You can actually... Live the Christian life with Christ and still drag around your old dead self. You can do that. And we do that. You can actually live for Christ, do all these good things for him, while dragging around your old dead self. What you cannot do, what I cannot do, is live my life as Christ and still drag around my old dead self. Why is this? Because the gospel tells us that we are at union, in union with Christ, in his death, therefore in his resurrection, therefore in his life through the Spirit. What if you need to stop living your life as a Christian and start living your life as Christ? Where the goal isn't, I'm a Christian, so I'm going to try not to sin, but no, I am living as Christ, therefore the Spirit wins out over flesh because of the victory that Jesus has over my life. It's just an idea. It's not easy, but it is simple. Want to catch the wind? Remember that you died. Lastly, you're maturing, but not acting like a child. (laughs) I'm about to give you permission to act like a child. This is going to be great. You never thought your pastor would say this, act like a child. You're maturing, right? You're like, we like to say, growing in your faith, right? You're going to church more, you're doing the stuff, like you're maturing. But you're forgetting how to act like a child, Romans 8 says this, For all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear. But you have received the spirit of adoption as sons, by whom we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are what? Yeah, not adults. 
that we are children of God. And this is good news. The word Abba is an Aramaic word for father. It was used in the context of the home and family. This word Abba is expressing the babbling of a young child to its father. What the Holy Spirit is testifying to your spirit is that you are a child. What the world is testifying to your flesh is that you are a slave. And when you feel or get enslaved, you move to a place of fear. And when you feel like you got to live from a place of fear, or you live from a place of fear, guess what you have to do? You have to master the art of being an adult. Where you got everything figured out. Where in any circumstance, you know what to do, even though you don't. Where um, you show no sign of weakness. But the Spirit isn't testifying to your spirit that you're an adult. It doesn't say that. He's testifying to your spirit that you're a child. The Spirit knows you know how to adult. You're like so good at it. So am I. But the Spirit's not saying, hey, don't forget, you're an adult. Grow up. He's saying, you are a child of God. Back in January of 2017, I had just closed out the same year you guys did that year, 2016, and uh, it was a really difficult year for me. It was the year that I had to do the most amount of adulting that I ever thought I'd have to do, and I was exhausted. John and I were not doing great that year. We just had lost some of that unity. Jess and I had a very difficult year, our most difficult year in our marriage, um, our church stopped growing for the first time in five years. We didn't grow. And I thought this was the end of the world. It wasn't, but it sure felt like it did as an adult. Um, we decided to put an addition on our house that I decided I was just going to run it. Um, I had to make all these different decisions I should have never been doing. I was just tired. And I had not felt like a child of any kind, especially a child of God in, in a long time maybe a couple years at that point. We were also setting out to launch our growth track. And if you've experienced the growth track, you know our first course is the Alpha course. And um, we thought, hey, if we're going to run the Alpha course, we should probably learn some best practices, uh, figure out who these people are that started Alpha. We just kind of wanted to know the drill. And so Dan and I had the privilege in January of 2017, we flew out to London. And we did this thing called Experience Alpha. And about 40 pastors from uh, mostly the U.S., but some from around the globe. So we flew out on a Sunday after church. We arrived midday, Monday, London time. We went to this quick little kickoff at that night. And the only thing we really did was we got into groups of like five or six, and we each had like a host of the circle, and the host had one question for everybody. And the question was this. Like, you're here in London. You're about to run the Alpha course. What is your hope? For you and your church. By you guys running the Alpha course, like what is your one hope for you and your church? And um, I was reminded as other people started answering the question, because I didn't know my answer. I knew as an adult and a leader of the church that I was here for you to tell me strategies that I could simply go back and then run them. I knew that much. But I actually took that first step as a child, not even a full step, and just thought, man, I'm here I wonder if there's something more. And God reminded me of the verse Zechariah 4, 6 that he reminded John of back in 2010 before we started mission. And it's this foundational verse that reminds us, and it's hanging, we got a picture of it, it's hanging in our lobby to remind us that the secret sauce of mission and anything good is because of the Spirit of God and what he does. And it reminds us of where our dependency ought to rest. Not on me, not on you, on the Spirit of God. And so when it got to me, I said, here's my hope. It's like we've got this verse, Zechariah 4, 6, that we stopped talking about, and we're definitely not experiencing. So it'd be cool if by running Alpha, we got to experience this again as a church. Went to sleep, woke up, had a full Tuesday, a bunch of different sessions, met a bunch of people. It was a great day. Learned a lot. And it was getting closer to the end of the day. I cannot remember if it was before or after dinner. But they said, hey, we're going to move into a time of prayer and worship. Now, I know that I'm a pastor, and I know that I lead worship, but I actually wasn't in the mood to pray. 
or to worship. Sorry. So I left, and I went across the street. I did. Dan stayed because he's a better person than me. (laughs) He is. And I left, and I went to take a quick nap, and I went to the hotel gym to work out, which those gyms, by the way, are never worth working out in, but I did it anyways just to try to like wake up, just feeling jet lag. And I walk back across the street into the same room that I left about 90 minutes earlier, and the entire atmosphere of the room was different. These pastors that I had spent about 36 hours with, they were different. They like weren't walking around like this, they were walking around a little just more like this. Their shoulders were just relaxed, set back. There was this childlikeness in the room that wasn't there when I left. And there was a pastor who was visiting from another city. His name was Johnny. And he was speaking words of knowledge. This is a gift of the Holy Spirit that we find in the Bible. He was speaking words of knowledge to people from across the globe. And he was asking them to stand up. And he was speaking something to them that he was receiving from the Holy Spirit. And it was powerful. And it was helpful. And it was encouraging. And it was magnifying Jesus. And it was awesome. And at the same time, I didn't want him to see me and do that to me. So thankfully in this room, there was pillars. So I just like did this and I hid behind the pillar and I would peek out to watch what was going on because it was incredible. It was encouraging my spirit, but I didn't want him to speak a word of knowledge to me. So when he was done and I felt safe enough to come around the corner, they said, hey, we're just going to, our band's going to play. We're just going to worship. And I said, all right, I'm ready to do that. And they said, if you want to come down just to receive prayer, just like we do at the end of service, They said, why don't you come and do that? It doesn't seem like a big deal, but in that moment, I just, I moved from around that pillar, and I just took a few steps forward just to go down and get prayer. It's amazing how those few simple steps to do that, like, thrust me into a childlikeness that I needed desperately in my soul. And even as I approached the front, I was already just beginning to feel the peace and the presence of God. And as I got close to the front, band's playing, a guy who I hadn't seen in the three days prior, I've never seen him since, I learned his name was Jacob, in his 70s, wearing an early 80s-like leisure suit. Very important detail. And he becomes available, and so I step forward, and he says, with an awesome accent that I won't do, he just asked me what he could pray for me. And when he asked me that and he leaned forward, I actually caught the wind, but it was what he had for lunch earlier that day. (laughs) And it was intense. And I thought it was going to ruin the moment, but it didn't. (laughs) And um, he said, he said, "What, what, what would you like me to pray? And I said, actually, I don't know. I don't know. And uh, so he's like, all right, you know, just put your hands out. So I was holding my hands and he put his hand on my chest For what felt like two minutes, it was probably 30 seconds, I don't remember. And uh, Dan was off to my right, he was getting prayed for, and the band was playing, and this guy's just standing there, not praying for me, or I can't hear anything. So I'm like, "What, what have I gotten myself into? And then he spoke, and he prayed these words, no more, no less. He prayed, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord Almighty. And his hand moved away from my chest, and then he disappeared, and I just stayed there with my hands open, my eyes closed, but just streaming with tears. Because I had come for a strategy, but I was met there with the power and the presence of Jesus through his Holy Spirit. And I was reminded, and I was being testified to my spirit. I was a child of God. I had not felt that really ever in my adult life. And I had been following Jesus pretty seriously for about 13 years at that point. And had never felt anything like it. So we go back to the hotel. We go to sleep. I tell Dan about this. I, just, I, can't, I can't even believe it. I literally can't believe how seen by God I felt. I was like, I, let's just go home. Like, I am good. <laughs> and um, so... Uh, That was Tuesday. So Wednesday, we wake up, we do another day, and then we're going to get to experience night one of the Alpha course. It was like their 96th Alpha course that they were running, and we were going to see night one. And if you're a host or a helper in the Alpha course, you know that we come here early, 
If you just attended Alpha, maybe you don't know we do this. But we come early. If you're a host or helper, and we go back in Mission Kids and we worship God and we pray for the guests that are about to walk in. And so we did that in London too. So we went into this room that they call the Springs. But if you were to imagine a room like the Springs, think of the exact opposite. It was like a big janitor's closet that they called the Springs. But if you hear the story of this church in that room, you know that like tons of evidence of the power and presence of God has happened in that room. People have been healed for decades in that room. And so there's about, I don't know, 80 of us crammed in this closet with risers so you can stack more people in. And they're preparing to receive guests who are coming tonight, one of Alpha. And there's a worship leader, and he's playing How Great Is Our God. And we're in this small room, and we're just singing at the top of our lungs. It's very powerful. And the guy who is leading the volunteers, he steps up, and he kind of nudges the worship leader out of the way. And he has his Bible open, and he's thumbing this way, and he's flipping that way. And then he finds what he was looking for. And he steps to the microphone, and he says these words, no more, no less. He says, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord Almighty. And I turn around. I want to make sure Dan's figuring out what's, like, he's seeing what's going on. I want to just make sure I'm not crazy. And so I turn around, and his eyes were filling up with tears. He was way more in the moment. I'm looking for cameras, like I think I'm on a reality TV show. (laughs) I'm like, okay, I'm not. And then throughout the night, I asked, do you guys like say this verse a lot? And the people are like, no, I've never heard it. I'm like, all right. I thought maybe you just said this everywhere. And I didn't know it. So that was cool. <laughs> we, we, we go out that night. It's, it's, we're done now. You know, we, the Alpha was amazing. And uh, we go out to a pub. And it's literally what you would imagine a pub in London is. It was, it was, it was cool. And I'm sitting at a table with a guy named John. He's from Naperville. He's now the national director of of Alpha here. He was our host. And he sits down. He's like, so, yeah, man, you know, how was your time? And I was like, it was pretty good. It was awesome. He's like, really? Tell me more. Like, yeah, I will. So I told him what I just told you. As I'm telling him the story, which I think is a pretty good story, by the way. As I'm telling him the story, he's not really looking at me. And he's like digging through his bag. I'm kind of getting annoyed that this guy's not listening to my story. But he digs out of his bag a journal. He slams it on the table. He opens it up. He's like, Sunday, when I got here, I was talking to God on the train, the the tube, they call it, the subway, from the airport to the hotel. I was asking God, what do these pastors need? What is the theme that they need to hear from you? He said, this is what God gave me. He's like, I didn't even know where it is in the Bible. And he just flipped his journal around, and the words, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, was written on the the journal. So now he and I, and we're just like, I, I, I don't even know what to do with this. There's so much more about this story that I tell at the partner course that has to do with Mission Church and how it really changed the trajectory of this church, but more importantly, like the heart of this church and like the approach, being way more spirit dependent. But every time I tell this story, I say this, and whenever people ask me, what was that like, particularly when Jacob prayed that over with me, I always say, and I alluded to it earlier, I never felt before or since so much like a child of God. I had never felt before or since more seen by God. And yes, there's been moments since, but nothing can come close to that. I don't need those moments anymore because I know who I am now because of that. But man, it, it was powerful. And I thought about like, if I could think of a human experience that I felt in that moment, just to help people understand, this is what it was like. When I was a kid growing up in these neighborhoods, if you're like my age, then you had a BMX bike. And I had a BMX bike, and it had a number plate on it. I didn't even race competitively, but it had a number plate on it. If you're my age, you know what I'm talking about. Um, And I would ride this bike all over these neighborhoods, right, to the mall, I mean, everywhere. But there would be these moments as a kid on my bike where a downhill would approach. You just hit that downhill, and you don't have to pedal anymore, but you are flying. 
It's in those moments, and it was summer always because I was never at school. I was on my bike. It was in those moments flying down a downhill and catching the wind, and there's this cool of the wind on my face, but also warmth of the sun on my arms. I'm going downhill, I'm flying, I'm catching the wind. And in that moment, I was reminded that my Abba Father was telling me, this is what life in the Spirit is like. It was one of those moments where like, you don't even mean to smile, but all you can do is smile. That's what it was like. Like a childlike smile. Not that fake kind of adult, like, mm, yeah, no, like a deep, joyous smile. Let me ask you some questions for your own assessment. Do you worship him like a child? Worship is more than singing, but every Sunday we get a chance to sing as how we worship. Let's just be honest. Do you worship composed like an adult? Like, holy, welcome here. Or do you actually come undone and worship your heavenly father like the child that you are? Do you trust him like a child? We're like, I know you got it figured out, but do you actually trust him like a child where you know he knows what is best for you? Do you listen for him like a child? Like, I know from experience, it's easy to go and find and hunt down the strategies that will help you get better at life. They're out there, and there's some really good ones. But do you actually fervently listen for him like a child? Do you follow him like a child? Do you remember if you have older kids when your kids were really young and they just would follow you everywhere you went and it's the sweetest thing ever? Do you follow him like that? Do you depend on him like a child? If you did your taxes last month, was it? I don't even know what month we're in. You list your children as what? What are they called? Dependents. Interesting. Do you depend on him like a child? A child. Do you laugh with him like a child? Do you cry with him like a child? There's nothing more tragic than an abandoned child. And if you are here today and you feel, and you might, if you feel abandoned by God, it is not, I promise you, because your heavenly father has abandoned you. It is because you have gone far too long without crying out to your Abba Father. If you want to catch the wind, three things. Fix your eyes on the kingdom of heaven and not the kingdom of earth. Bury once and for all your old self and cry out as a child to your father. And you will be so caught up in the wind like you've never been before. Here's what I want to do to finish. Um, we're going to dim the lights. And... I want to just give you guys an opportunity. I'm not even going to ask you to come forward. I'm going to ask you to just make a move, a childlike move, and just like lay down all of your pretenses and control and everything. I've been praying that the Holy Spirit would just flood this place with his comfort and love and leading. And maybe you would be in the camp, that first thing we talked about, and maybe you would say that when it comes to catching the wind, that you have eyes that need to be fixed. Like you don't even, you haven't even meant to, but the world and what's going on in it, and particularly our country and what's going on in it and all the differing stuff and all the noise, right? It's, it's important. But if you were honest, you would say you have been fixated on it. And you have completely missed everything about the kingdom of heaven right in front of your eyes. If that is you, and it doesn't even have to be about the stuff I mentioned, if you have just lost sight of the kingdom of heaven and you want the Holy Spirit to help you catch the wind and give you his eyes to see the kingdom of heaven for you to see it and to experience it, would you make a bold move and just, just stand where you're at? If you have eyes that need to be fixed, just stand. If you are in the camp that I would just say flesh that needs to be buried, you, 
you don't want to sin. I don't want to sin. But this life is hard. And you have just forgotten the truth. That your old self was crucified. Jesus. And you have raised to new life in him. And yes, sin will happen, but you are freed from it. If that is you, would you make a bold move? If you have flesh that needs to be buried once and for all, would you stand? And then lastly, if you would say that you are a child that needs to be held. You are like super adult. You're so good at so many things, and that's awesome. You can figure it out. You can do it on your own. Like, you know the drill. If you have been allowing the world to testify to your flesh and to your spirit that you have to be an adult, I have been praying that in the name of Jesus, by the power of his spirit, that he would do now in this room what he promises to do. Testify to your spirit that you are a child of God. If you know you need that, I'm inviting you to make a bold move and just stand. Might be the first non-adult thing you've done in a long time. All right, let's bow our heads. And actually, prayer team, you guys can make your way forward. We're almost done. And I invite anybody who's in the room anywhere, would you just be praying with me as I pray? Come, Holy Spirit. Let me pray for you guys. God, we pray in the name of Jesus to you, our Heavenly Father, who loves us. I pray specifically for the group that have eyes that need to be fixed and refocused. Citizen of heaven, ambassador to earth. Would you help us move and live about, yes, the places we're from, we're not going anywhere, but with a deep knowing and remembering the place that you have made us of, the kingdom of heaven. On earth as it is in heaven, I pray in the name of of Jesus over these lives. God, would you help those that stood to not only see but to experience the power of heaven more gifts of the Spirit, more power of the Spirit, salvations, healings, confession of sin, repentance, turning away from sin. Holy Spirit, come in the name of Jesus. Fix our eyes on what is unseen, the kingdom of heaven, we ask. For the second group of people, we pray in the name of Jesus. Would you help us know that our old self was buried with your son, Jesus Christ, that we are a new creation, the old is gone. God, would you help the sin that entangles us to be cut off in the name of Jesus because you have given us victory over the power of sin. Come, Holy Spirit, and remind those of us that the old is gone, that the new has come. Would we walk in the realm of the Spirit in neglect the spirit of flesh. For the third group, (laughs) I would imagine, but I'm grateful, God, you know, that the third group, they're just tired. Like decision fatigue. um, Come Holy Spirit. Would you testify to their spirit who they are? They're a child of God and whose they are, that they belong to you. Come, Holy Spirit, would you help them to be seen, help them to be known. Help them to be free of all of the adulting that they feel like they have to do. Would you teach them to worship again, to get into your word again like a child? To come to you first and throughout and last for advice like a child. Help us, help us. 
This world trains us and teaches us, God, how to be really great adults, but we want to live in your kingdom. Would you help us and give us, in the name of Jesus, a child likeness that only comes from you? Help us to know and learn how to approach your throne constantly and consistently as a child. Pray this in Jesus' name. Would everybody now stand? I'm going to pray for all of us as we close out this morning. The series, like I said, if if you need to receive prayer, we have a prayer team in the back and in the front. Don't, don't leave without doing that. Let me pray for all of us. God, we thank you for this series. We thank you for the gift of your Holy Spirit. We thank you for the vision that you have given us, a movement of Jesus. And so, Holy Spirit, would you come like a mighty wind and flow through the individuals of this church and our church as a whole like never before? Would you make it undeniable? Would the gifts of your Spirit be experienced like never before with the power of your spirit be seen and known and experienced like never before we are asking for more power more power in the name of Jesus we long to see your kingdom expand here on earth as it is in heaven so would you use us would you help us to truly catch the wind of your spirit as people but also as a body of Christ the local church we want to we need to catch the wind of your spirit We love you and all God's people said, amen. Love you guys. Thank you for the time and we will see you next week. We are mission. Love you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in to this teaching today. We pray that it helped you in your journey to find and follow Christ. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube or to our podcast so that you don't miss any more of our upcoming messages. And as always, we would love to see you right here at Mission Church on a Sunday. We will see you soon.